but there's extensive coverage with uh, the tutorial, so you can easily look it up. But it's not important for you as architects for the essence of your as an architect. You look if you want to make high quality renders and renderings and photorealistic things, but it's not essential. Now there are uh, 60 of these tutorials. I think it's about 10 hours, <laughs> 15 hours, so it's a lot. So there are very few which are uh, introduction making a very simple step, or uh, uh, several of them make a simple step, so which is just introduction. Then there is a set of uh, tutorials which uh, give you an introduction to certain concepts. This is what will be in the exam. So and then there are more, more or less extensive examples which cover up to one and a half hours. So, so. And um, today I will uh, reflect on all this. And uh, then I want to go to uh, more advanced stru uh, structures in Mathematica, which is the kernel then what I think is coding and uh, how there are two different modes of doing architectural models. One is in grammars, this will be the topic of the day. And the other is parameter driven, this will be the topic of the last uh, lecture in two weeks. Um, as always, it's very important is <coughs> my, my choice. But the problem with all this is it's complicated to make it. So you need exercises to make it. And this is beyond that what you can reach in your first year, second year, and so on. Absolutely clear. You can't make it by yourself. Therefore, the idea is what I'm telling you is that you get a principal idea of what this is about. So if you run into certain problems in your design, you have to somehow get the idea that this is the solution. And this is the path how to learn it. So, therefore, what I'm telling you is, and, and how you should listen to it, even if I'm doing it step by step and with code and so on, is not to try to understand what the code in detail is about. You have to try to understand what my story is. And this is what I think you have to get. That was complicated with exams on these things and so on. So I think it's important that you remember this story about topology and what the architectural model in, uh, uh, in, uh, in, in design and so on. This is what you have to remember. So it's a very abstract play around with things. And you have to see that I give you all the code that it's just thinking. It's a lot of, yeah, not what you need to, to deal with it. With the blender, for example, or you have to deal with the standard graphics in Mathematica, but this is the, uh, the literacy. So then you have to understand that this literacy is affecting your architectural model. And you get incredibly powerful with that. So all these problems you run with, what is around with building information models, or I told you that um, the terabytes of data for building and so on, they are like that. It's like that. So it's simply nothing left if you are doing it in a way I try to introduce you. So it's, it's an intellectual thing, not a thing of uh, the problem is an intellectual one, not the one of uh, craftsmanship. So let's summarize what CAT is about. And nobody says it like that, but I think I'm pretty sure that's the core of it. So what we always say is this double this circularity. <coughs> so, and uh, what we distinguish in all these tutorials, in Blender we had this uh, object mode and we had the edit mode. So we call, I call it a design object on the lower side, and I call it, in contrast to that, an architectural model. So the architectural model, the uh, design object, is with looking. And 
the good of painting. A good of generalization, analysis, uh, with the algorithms, and so on. A good art <laughs> as, as well. So this design could be made it comfortable. So these are the objects. The architectural model, in strict contrast to that, is auditive, is talking. So it's not listening, it's talking. So, and that is sculptural. And by that, expressive. And this is impression and impressive. And no, this is impression and that's expressive. But you never should take these dualities with two nouns. Or and, and, and so that's always very complicated in, in, uh, in these uh, things. So it's reading, looking, or talking. So if you look at this, then for example, you can.
talking about. And this is trouble. So therefore, head is a mediator between code and image. Whatever means like all. Good. <laughs> okay, now with Blender. So you've seen this is the object mode. <clears throat> this is our insertion point here. So we add whatever object we, we want. For example, this one. So this is a design object. What we are doing, and we will have a lot to do with it today, because this is the grammar of, about the grammar and the topology of your architectural modeling, with these points. These points are important. So we can, for example, just to, to show you, we make another one. So we have this uh, sphere, uh, make it smooth. So, what is here, and we have it here, the cube and the sphere. This is a hierarchy, so it's an outliner of your architectural model. And what they have is they simply have an index to the designed object. So this is what we always have. So now we are in edit mode. Now it's in architectural model again. So and these indexes are here. So if you go uh, here for in, in these uh, properties of your selected thing, here these are the uh, is the data, and this is a database of meshes. Of these are the upper side on the. So this is the, the sculptural part of your design object. There's a database, and you see these are there two now. That is implicit in Blender. No, I can change it. Which simply changed. You have now two architectural positions, one and two. So we can go here. We see there's a cube, and we can say, make another database object in there. Here, make another. Now we have two database objects. To design object meshes, I have two architectural points, 
and I have two, in they call it instances of design objects, put it here and here. So we have modeled it only once, and we have two instances of it. So because if you are in the design object, you are always in the production of things. It's not the object itself. So the design object is always a production of things. And then you take two products and put them in place. That's the architectural gesture. So if we have that with these uh, chairs here, you have one design object, but you have 200 instances, products, and you put them in place. So in architecture, you would have an outliner, for example, auditorium here, and then you put 200 points with position and rotation, and you can't have mirroring, and you can't have scaling, because you can't scale a, a, a product. You can't scale within the production. You can't mirror a product, but you can mirror the production. So this, for example, it, it's not told, and so these kind of restrictions, they are not done and, and given in, uh, in uh, Blender, for example. And they're not given in CAD systems. But this is one of the very, so my brother is making good money with this, just <laughs> eliminate just the mirror door in the, or windows in, the <laughs> in floor plans, because they, you always get the wrong door if they are mirrored in, uh, in, in a CAD system. So it, <laughs> simply just by mirroring and say, okay, the same axis, just make it on the other side. And then you have the same instance or the same product, but mirrored. But you can't buy a mirrored one. You need another one. It needs another number. That's one of the nicest mistakes in, in, your, in your setup if you want to manage and organize buildings. Never touch mirroring. Yeah? You can do it in the production, because then you are with the tools, how to do it, and so on, and there are a lot of tutorials how to do how these design objects and, and how the design or the editing is mimicking production lines or processes of production. Then you can make it uh, and mirror it and so on, because it's a movement of tools. You can mirror the movements. That's not the problem. But you can't mirror artifacts. Yeah? These are always the distinctions between these up and down levels. So that's it here. Now let's go for the cube and go into it. So what I did, let, let's uh, show it with a video. All these videos here. Textures. That's me. <coughs> so I just took photo of my uh, of my table at, at my uh, at my home. Just take a photo, no problem. You can take whatever you like. Go around in your in whatever you're interested in, the carpet, the, 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 the whatever. Yeah. So take whatever you like. So this is how to take it. So now I want to show you how this works. So you go to <coughs> uh, the edit mode. What you first need is you have to um, define a, a material. So this is a meshes, database of meshes. This is a database of materials. And we say we want to have a material which is called uh, plain plain white. We always take this principal PSD and uh, now if we go for the renderer oh we, oh we need a light. But we did that all this uh, stuff. Now we have the light. Um, turn it. So now we have light and we can look at the material and this is plain white. 
if we uh, uh, select that, then we see our database for the meshes as cube. So this is the design, this is sculptural aspect of our design. And this is the painting natural aspect of our design. This is the material. So it's a filling. So these are the two, uh, the two dichotomies of our design. The natural one and then the intellectual one. So again, a database, it's absolutely symmetric. We had plain white. Now go to uh, edit mode, go to uh, texture here. <coughs> and uh, add another one because you just want to uh, have the top um, face with wood. So we create a new object in our database. We say it's a printable BSD. We call it wood. That's here. And give it uh, a color like that. So now if we go for material. Uh, okay, no. Now we have to edit select this face here and say would assign and then we have just this here the top face with wood we can have the other as well say assign and then we have to see sign and is this or if you want to have a sign and by that you go to see our object that's a design object. The design object is the mesh. The mesh has vertices, edges, and faces. They are here, edges and faces. And then the faces can be associated with the other aspect, with the textures. And then you say you have to look for databases for the, for the meshes, and you have to look for the databases of the uh, materials. And then you say, this here should be assigned to this face. Good. And by that you have different colors and so on. So it's not an assignment to an object, you need it to the faces. So, and then you can say, I have all faces with wood, or all with red, and so on. But just this, I think, is now put that to white again. So now we are here with the design of it. So textures now is that you don't have a plain uh, a color, but an image. So each pixel is different. So by that we have to load the, the image. We need another editor. So we have the UV image editor. And again, we have to open our database. I think I have my, it's a texture, where is it? Textures. Yeah, this is a wood. We can look at it like here. And this is a picture of my table. That's a texture. It's here. And now, we have this three-dimensional virtual object and we are looking at, at it with different cameras from different views but they are virtual and you can't see them so for example we have, this is another view so or you can look from the top this is from the side whatever and this is our picture and it has a complete different coordinate system. And this picture here is in the production line. And this is on building site. So therefore I have to take it from the production line and map it to the object in your virtual space. So this is done with UV mapping. So you select that and then you say U and then you say here a lot of options because if you have complicated uh, geometries, for example, here's this kind of cylinder, 
then it's complicated how to put it's a projection from you need a certain kind of projection how to get this picture there so with a cube for example it's very simple you simply say it's a plane projection of the picture here with a cylinder for example you want to have a rotational projection so you put what somehow the, put the projection on the axis of that and project then the picture in a, in a spherical thing if it's something round you want to project from the center and so on and these are the options here so now but we are uh, very simple so we, have, we project it like uh, this so we say the mapping of no, here, now we say this object here unwrap should be these 2d coordinates should be 3d here so next thing to do is that we have to say we do that with our node editor we can do it here by for example going here and say there should be a, a, a texture and so on but here it's more there's it, a better, better overview so these are the same panels this is our principal um, uh, our principal um, mat matter and instead of this plain color we simply say we have a texture we have an image texture here so we select our image here and we go and put the color here and now you see that it's match. If we now go for the UV map, and now you can edit the 2D. That's, I, I like it very much. Now go here. D. You see how it, you can distort, so zoom. And so now it's uh, one to one. Now you can, for example, scale it. If you make it smaller here, it's getting bigger. There, it's always inverse. Or you can rotate it. So I like that very much. <laughs> yeah. This is how to get a picture to a mesh to make a fully detailed uh, design. So, there are uh, some uh, there's some uh, important uh, now to, to shorten it. These are bump maps. So the problem now is that if you render, it's getting very, very flat. It's just you have a polished surface just with these colors so if you look here it's rough so what you do and you can look it up in for example a polygon um, textures here uh, for example here Um, go for, for example, fabric. Here, this is a kind of carpet. And what you have is here that you go for the normals. I uh, know this is a little bad to see. So this is a surface, this is a picture. And now, if you go for the normals, now let's show it in, the, in, in Photoshop. So, this is a picture. Take whatever you like. And here with filters, with 3D, you have this bump and normal map. Let me 
say, okay, there are a lot of parameters, but this is a phenomena what you have. You get a so-called normal map, which means they try to get a direction of the pixel. So they calculate from out the color of the picture, uh, of, the, of, the, of the pixel. So just the fit. So by that, they put it into a direction. So this depends on the contrast of a pixel to its neighbors. And by that, they put it into a certain direction. So here you see these are the layers or the channels here. So and this is, look at this. Yeah. This is looking from top. So this is light from top. This is li light from down. Ah, no. No, okay. This is from in vertical. That's a contrast if you have straight light from vertical. So therefore, the white things look, the white element, uh, pixels look top, to the top side, and the darks look to the uh, downside, and the grays are in between. So that's orientation, and if you have this material, it's orientation in this way. Dark, bright, dark. So here, it's left, right. Yeah, and here is top down or something. So on sRGB, it looks like that. And you can save that. Very simple. Bump is the same. And using that, here you see it's it's very very. So doing this here, yes, of course, of course. So using that. You can look it up, you get very crisp surface, uh, and, and so you get a, a rough uh, textured surface. This is called normal map or bump map. So which means, as we see it here in Polygon, that you can go here for textures. Now we have been here. That you can go around things and you don't have to model it. It's just a photo. That's good, huh? And it's very simple to do. You simply take a picture, go to Photoshop, and play around with it. And you have sliders to make it uh, make make it th uh, thicker or thinner and so more more rough and, and, and so on. This is how to give uh, relief to things. Yeah? This is short tutorial step by step how to do it. So I think that's it. There's nothing more. So another Um, now we have here so now this is for example to make uh, to make these kind of elements with textures so take the texture and I gave you all the code from no, where, where is it? Here, from whatever you take, take a picture, what you like. If you want to have this kind of pattern and work with it, this is a way, for example, in Mathematica to do that. You can make it with uh, Photoshop or with uh, InDesign or Vectorworks or whatever. Don't use a Blender for it. So make this kind of uh, precise pattern here. Apply it. The same what we did. Now you can turn it 
so that you get a, a pattern which works in all directions on the queue. And I always like it very much because I think uh, architecture is about this kind of crystallinic organization in space time. So this is just one plane, it's one cube, one texture, one. Yeah. Good. Very simple here as well. Then you have this baroque setup. Again, a Mathematica, very short code. To do that, export it. Very rough picture. You can play around, it's parametric. Take another proportion in numbers, it's nearly nothing. Go to Blender. Make it light. Texture. Now we have the texture here. Zoom it and then you see that you can have so if if your area is much bigger than your element, then you get these kind of buckets. And they are working pretty nice. So this is a typical Baroque effect. That in space, depending on where, how, you're, how you're walking and positioning the things uh, uh, is different in, in space. And the visual effect is different. So this is a celebration of this uh, looking at design objects. This is what, what that you see, we, <coughs> we have to, as persons, we look at design objects, we're walking around, and depending on how we are looking, they change. That's a typical Baroque gesture. And in my cycle with the figure there on the left side, this is looking at the design object as a person, and then talking about it. Good. Yeah, that's the principle. So, now let's go to the to a systematicity in the uh, architectural model itself. So, not go to the, to the texture, but how, if these objects are there. So my, my strong idea of how it works is <laughs> that you should create libraries of materials and meshes. You really should make a big library of books materials and meshes. <laughs> Simply collect whatever you can get. Because it's kind of silly always to make it new. <laughs> so, run around, make meshes. Run around, uh, yeah, uh, take and get meshes and look, oh, it's good. Manipulate them, put it into your library. So keep them. Organize them in a way that you can find them again. So you can reuse them and so on because all this is librarian work. Like in these offices, architectural offices, they have all the magazines, they have all their models, they have uh, all the materials and so on. Do it virtually, do the same thing. And you're super fast and you get, you will like your element then. For example, this, uh, this Baroque pattern, it's super simple. And if you reuse it in your design, you get friends with it. 
or not. So change it, make another version of it with other colors or different uh, proportions and so on. Get friend with it and reuse it as a conception. But, so because you need something in your, in your uh, designs. So take photos of things you like. Don't take these libraries. So it's, it's not this cool just to take these uh, ready-mades and so on. Just make them. And keep them and say, I like it. These are your memories on things. And apply it to, to your, your design. And then it gets yours. This is storytelling of things you experienced. Or your customers experienced. So, for example, what, uh, what I find the most impressive thing is uh, in, in, from architectural pra practice, we had uh, Hide was a, a Japanese uh, postgraduate. He was there for two years at our chair doing postgraduate studies. And he worked in a famous Japanese uh, office. And they, 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 so, because it's Tokyo, so he slept under, under the desk. Then he has to be earlier than his uh, master, the architect, and then he can't leave before the master leaves, and then two hours of driving, so he slept under, in most cases underneath the table, and then he worked and slept, and so So it's, it's this kind of way they're doing it. So, and then he told how, told how they are working with their customers. So it's a kind of renovation of a small house. They're very small houses. One room, a small kitchen, nothing else. Rich people, somewhere. A window, a door, a small kitchen, whatever. So it's really very few things. So and then meet with these customers every week for three hours and discuss the renovation. <laughs> so, and then they make some some models or they make some renderings or they so and present it and they discuss it and then they gave, they ask customers to think about certain things or to collect something. Or they collect something, so some materials for things, and they discuss about it. So and then they, and then they meet next week, and we can meet again. Another three hours about something, and they say, "What is the next thing?" What so? And then they discuss. Then they think, "Where can we discuss this new material for this uh, for this uh, fenster bank? Where, where can we best discuss it?" So then they should look for a place somewhere in the city or in a park or in a, in a temple or in a bar or whatever and discuss it there, this detail. And they do it for one and a half or two years, so 100 times. And by that they load their design. At the end they don't do a lot, so it's not, nearly nothing to do, but everybody is happy. They load it with stories and things, and I think that's very important. You don't have to make these strong things like like Sahadet or Istanbul refurbished. <laughs> so, happy to be a creative moment of an hour, and then you have all these errors and make a million city. But well, this is shit. If everybody wants to do it, it's crash. It's always a crash. Yeah? It's war. So what we have is what we need to what we need to get an eye to is this kind of sophistication and, and quality. So and this is mo mostly about storytelling. So and they are with your objects. And it's how you understand that and how your customer starts to understand. And they are happy at the end because they know the value of it. And they learned it and they developed it and so on. I find that very uh, precious and delicate and a little decadent. But the rest of the machines, yeah? they are doing all this stuff. So we, we don't need to work hard. It's about a new kind of decadence. And it's in this, this vector. So I find this story very impressive. And therefore, collect your stories. Collect them. And the beauty of these machines is that they are there. In the same we can combine them. By that, you put elements, you put surfaces, you put uh, make, make architectural models, you have your design objects, you have the textures, and so on. And you make a story. It's a story. And you need memories. And your libraries are memories. And you have to build up, you have to be rich in memories. Just do it like that. <laughs> and of course, you can do it with movies and so on, no problem. Yeah? So, uh, <laughs> and 
the texture is just, if you have a time slider as an animation, then you play a movie on that. There are tutorials how to, uh, how to make a video screen, so it's light emitting, or you can project light like this machine here, and uh, uh, to make all this uh, thing uh, run, or you make it interactive, whatever. So it's all about, and this is what computing is about, that, and this, all this circulation I told you with the lambda calculus, it's, it's not straight, it's not a production line. It's always circulating whatever you want crossed with anything, anything else. It's always relating around. That's it. And you need something beautiful. And by making, so it's not <laughs> like a tent <laughs> or a jet. <laughs> so it's, it's a kind of <laughs> getting a beautiful, it's circulating things. So you need to enrich that this movement of circulating itself around. And with the one thing that I told you with Google, Google is a, it's a five line or three line poem. And it turns all the world. This is what computers are able to do. They're turning all the time the whole world. There's nothing else. So I, that's, I think, it's uh, important somehow to, to remember that at least. So I forgot everything from my, what I learned uh, the first three years. But this, these are climatic things you learn. Yeah? So you, s you know, this is what I want, I mean, nothing else. So because you have to, in the first year, second year, third year, you always need to orientation. You have to, to open up and say, mm, yeah, what is this? And so on. You get you have to get used to these kind of stories. And then you make your decision how to position yourself. But if then a, a story or a problem in this direction comes and you say, huh, I heard different. <laughs> and this was a kind of charming story. And then you can uh, focus and really learn it, how to do it and so on. So I think this is what the, the study is about. Good, let's have now it's a good uh, point. Let's have a break of 10 minutes and then continue.